Hi everybody, this is Victoria Christopher Murray and I'm here to talk to you about something that's very exciting for me. My 10th novel is coming out on Tuesday, June 7th. The Deal, The Dance, and The Devil. And as I said, this is my 10th novel and I can't believe it all this time already. I remember when I had one novel and two fans, my husband and my father, but 10 years, it's been a long time and I've been so blessed by God. So what I want to do with you is to share uh, a little bit about this novel, just the first chapter, or a piece of the first chapter, and tell you a little bit about this couple, Adam and Evia Langston. And it is no coincidence that their names are very similar to that man and woman that shared the Garden of Eden. So here it is, The Deal, The Dance, and The Devil. Five million dollars. All I could do was stare at the check. To be sure, I counted again. Seven figures, two commas, yep, this was definitely five million dollars. I could have stared at those numbers all day, but I had to look up and at my boss, Shay Chante. My eyes asked the questions, and she explained, that's for you. And then she leaned back in what I called her throne and smiled as if she gave out seven-figure checks on the regular. That's when I started laughing hard. There had to be a joke in here, and I figured I'd just get a head start before Shay Chante filled me in. But she didn't laugh. She didn't chuckle. She didn't even blink. She just smiled as if she was waiting for me to get it together. That's when my heart started thumping. Could this $5 million check made out to me, Evia Langston, be real? The thought made me weak, made me fall into the chair in front of her desk. Okay, keep breathing, I told myself. First I inhaled, then I did just the opposite. I knew this was one of those too-good-to-be-true moments, but for a second I pushed aside the question of why anybody would give me $5 million and thought about how desperately my husband and I needed this money. Oh my God, I said under my breath, this will save our lives. I didn't mean to say that too loud, but I guess I did because Shay Chante said that's what I was thinking. My eyes burned, tears were on their way, but just when I was about to get down on my knees and thank God and Shay Chante... That ringing in my heart started. Oh no, I wasn't trying to hear that. I tried to shake it away, but it trilled all the way down to my soul. When I was a kid, Big Mama told me that all God's children had his voice inside of them. Well, I didn't have a voice. What I had sounded more like an alarm clock, but however it sounded, my grandmother told me that it should never be ignored. It's the voice of the Lord warning you when something ain't right. Never turn your back on the Lord, child, or you'll find yourself knee-deep in the devil's trouble. From the time I was a kid right till now, Big Mama's words had been nothing but the truth. Every time I heard that alarm, I sat down and thought things through. But I didn't want to do too much thinking about this. I, it wasn't that I didn't want to listen to God. It was just that I didn't want him to do too much talking right about now. Because I was sure that if he spoke, it could mess up this whole $5 million thing I had going on. What is this, I asked with a calm that I didn't feel. The check was still clenched tightly in my palm. My plan was to never let it go. My boss tossed her hair away from her face. I'm assuming you're not really asking what that is, since you know it's a check. She stood, did one of those model sway strolls toward me, perched her butt on the corner of her glass desk, and then stretched out her long legs. Let's just call this a fee. For services rendered... I frowned. What kind of services would have to be rendered to get a $5 million fee? I knew it. This had to be a joke. Then Shay Chante explained, My birthday's coming up. Dang, dang, dang. I knew for sure now that this check and I was soon going to be parted. I knew that Shay Chante's birthday was approaching, though I doubted if too many others knew. My boss was super private almost anal in her secrecy. She never shared anything with anyone about the who, what, when, where of her life. Articles found on the internet estimated her age because no one knew for sure. But I knew that her big birthday was coming up, the big 5-0, in three weeks on New Year's Eve. I guess that since this was the big one, she decided to come from behind her private curtain and celebrate in public. As visions of $5 million in my bank account danced right out of my head, I wondered what kind of party Shay Chante wanted for this kind of money. So, I began, this check is for your birthday. For a party? Yes. 
I waited for her to say more, but she didn't. So I said, you want me to plan it? She tilted her head as if she had to think. Then with a smile that looked kind of sly to me, she said, you could say that. And then nothing else. Okay, this was beginning to feel like some kind of game, which was strange because Shea Chante didn't play. She was always about business. After a deep breath, she explained more. My life has been pretty hectic. I shrugged. Yeah, was all I said to that understatement. Of course her life was busy. How many multimillionaires didn't have full schedules? And truth, I only called Shea Chante a millionaire because that's what had been reported in the media. But I would bet all kinds of money that there was more than one black female billionaire in the United States of America. Okay, my boss said, I'm going to just say this straight out. Shea Chante strolled away from me, returning to her desk. I've been too busy to plan anything special for my big birthday. I grabbed a notepad from her desk. That's okay. Rachel and I are on it, I said, speaking about her other assistant. You need you won't need be needing Rachel's help. I frowned a little. With all that was on my plate, there was no way I was going to be able to handle Shay Chante's party alone. Her birthday was December thirty first, and it was already December second. Shay Chante went on to say, Don't worry, you won't need any help, as if she read my mind. The thing is, with the way my life is going right now, I don't have anyone special to share this birthday with. Oh, I got it. She was trying to figure out how to have a mandatory party, probably right here in her corporate building, where she could strongly suggest that all 600 of her employees attend. She said, well, 50 is a special birthday, and I don't want this milestone to pass without some kind of celebration. I felt a tinge of an ache in my heart for the mogul. She may have been giga gorgeous, super sexy, and mega rich, but she was alone. She was single, childless, and as far as I could tell, without any relatives at all, since the only personal thing she'd ever shared with me was that her parents had passed away when she was very young. Shea Chante's life was a constant reminder to me that money wasn't everything, because no matter what Adam and I were going through, we had each other. Shea Chante said, so after really thinking about this, I want to pay you for a weekend my birthday weekend, to spend that time with your husband. Okay, clearly I had mentally checked out for a moment, or maybe the fact that I was still holding on to this $5 million check had me delirious. I placed the back of my hand against my forehead to see if I had a fever, to see if that's the reason why my ears clearly were not working. Shay Shante continued, I know about the problems you and Adam are having. I know this money will help. So I had heard her correctly. It must have been the way I sat there staring that made her continue. I don't want your husband, Evia, at least not permanently. Oh, was that supposed to make me feel better? I only want him for a weekend. She kept on like we were just girls just talking to help me celebrate. That was when it hit me what she really meant. Now I couldn't move. I stopped blinking, stopped breathing, stopped everything. I stared, no, I glared at her as if she had lost her dang blang mind. Then I started to laugh again, and she stared back at me as if I'd lost mine. Girl, that is so funny, I stood up, and today's not even April Fool's. Oof. I reached out to give her back the check. Well, I've got to go, got to get back to work. Shea Chante made no moves to take back the money, so I laid the check on her desk. Her shoulders were stiff. Her face solemn, her eyes small, focused and intense, like she was stalking her prey. This isn't a joke, Evia. That $5 million is yours if you and Adam agree to take this deal. So that's a little bit of the first chapter. That's not even the end because I'm sure you can imagine what Evia says after that. But I'm so excited and I hope you guys will support me on Tuesday, June 7th, and get your copies of The Deal, The Dance, and The Devil. And if you could do me a favor and tell just five other people about this new novel. This is a trying time for all of us in publishing, so I really need and appreciate your support. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.